come back and fellowship with you all. It's been a joy. And mine. And it always is. Thank God. Thank God once again for blessing us with these great opportunities. And thank God that my wife is back with us this Sunday. When she ain't with me, I feel bored in there. You know, I got so every now and then I have to look at her and pull some energy. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. I thank God for my children being here. Amen. Amen. Uh, irregardless of whether he, he's actually blood or not, that's my nephew. Amen. And I'm sticking to it. Amen. We love him. We're glad Amen. that he was able to come. And he's been spending the weekend with us. He's glad to have him. Amen. And he Amen. eats a little less than the rest of them, so that helps out a little bit. <laughs> I want to prolong the service. We're looking at 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 5. We're only going to read one verse in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That one verse, verse 17. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold on. Amen. Larry Bull and Curly, y'all got it? Okay. Cool. One. All right. And it reads Stand up. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you. Man. Praise you again for this great and glorious opportunity to stand before this your people. And as always, Father, we ask your eyes behind the cross that they won't hear and see you, that you will get the glory, all that praise out of everything that is said and done here today. And Father God, we truly need to hear a word from you. And Father God, if we don't hear from you, we won't know what to do. So, Father God, we pray that you open up our hearts, open up our minds and our ears, Lord God, that we may be attentive to what you have to say to us, Father God. Lord God, we pray that you bless this word, that it will go out and accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish, that it will not return for us. Bless us right now and keep us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to talk to you for a little while from the subject, what a difference the presence of God makes in our lives. What a difference the presence of God makes in our lives. This morning, I know that, that you know, of course, our Sunday school lesson for some reason is a little different from you all. This morning we talked about prayer and the importance of prayer. Why we should pray, what's the importance of being persistent in prayer when we're praying to God. So when I looked at that and I was telling the children that there's a difference in your life when God shows up. When you get saved, there's a difference. There's no way you can have an encounter with God and still be the same person. There's no way. There's no way you can come in contact with him. Your attitude is still messed up. Your mind is still clogged up with all of that stuff that shouldn't be in there. Your heart is still harboring bad feelings and all that. There is no way you can come in contact with God and still be that same old person. If you come in contact with God and still be that same old person, you and him didn't have any contact at all. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. There is no way. Because the Bible plainly just tells us in 2 Corinthians that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. Things are different. My attitude is different. My mindset is different. I don't think like I used to think. Mm -hmm. I don't have all that garbage cluttering my mind up anymore. Why? Because God has me thinking on different things. I'm thinking on a whole different level mm -hmm. than what I used to think on. Amen. Your actions change. Amen. See, when you, when you get in Christ, even your actions change. The way you used to treat people, the way you used to act and stuff and cut up and clown, you don't do that stuff no more. Mm -hmm. And then the thing about it, you don't even have a desire mm -hmm. to do that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. God takes all of that away from you. You know, a lot of us, and let's just be real, a lot of us sometimes have some nasty attitude. Amen. You might not want to admit it, but, <laughs> but we have some nasty attitude sometimes. 
Sometimes our mouths are just something else. You catch them on the wrong day, and it's over with. They don't tell you what you may do. <laughs> I'm just saying. We sit up on Sunday morning, as my pastor would say, Reverend Freeman said, we got our sabbatical best on. We looking good and hair looking nice and everything. And we in here jumping up and shouting and waving our hands and praising God and catch them on the other side of that door. Mm. Child, did you see what she had on? Mm. What she come to church just like that for? Mm. Did you see them? Mm. He was sitting over there with his suit on. Well, the shoes don't even match what he got on, girl. What in the world was he thinking about this morning? Mm. And we totally <laughs> missed what God had for us. Boy, that's right. Sometimes the, the stories that she, she tells, the inspirational messages that she gives us, yeah, mm. some of them are funny, mm. but there's a hidden meaning in every one Boy, that she gives. Oh, yeah. Amen. But some folks just get hung up on the funny part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you miss what God has for you. Oh, yeah. Amen. You totally miss it. Why? Because God is not involved in nothing you got going on. Oh, yeah. Amen. When God is involved in your life, you know it. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. And not only do you know it and you can feel it, other folk know it too. Amen. Amen. Other folk can tell that there's a difference about you. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? You don't have the desires or the wants that you used to have. Boy. You know, they can tell, you know what? I, I can't say certain things around them. You know, they, uh, you know, they say, now nah, I can't talk to you like this. You're right, you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so move on, boo boo. I want you talking to me like that. I'm talking around me like they go about your business. Mm -hmm. Some folk, they, they understand that no, and, and some people actually give you a little bit more respect when they find that out. Boy, they yeah. know that there's certain things and stuff we don't even invite them to because we know they're not going. Boy, yeah. They know that there's a difference in you. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, if you come in contact with him and there is no difference, you got a long way to go. Boy, yeah. There is no way you can come into a service. I tell folk all the time. When God really comes in the service and everybody in here has God in them and they don't want to call, I promise you the musicians can't play. Mm. Nothing where the deacons can't do they what they do. Mm. Nothing. Why? Because everybody is in tune with God and God has this place jumped. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because everybody don't want to call and in tune with him. Amen. Your attitudes change, your thoughts change, your action, your prayer life gets better. Mm. You ever been at, at a point in your prayer life where you just got stuck? It wasn't exciting anymore. Mm. You didn't find a joy in praying. You didn't find a joy in reading your Bible anymore. But when you finally got that true connection and that true contact with God, oh, yeah. everything changed. Mm -hmm. You got excited about reading the Bible. You got excited about spending time with him. Why? Because you knew that if I go and spend time, God will reveal something to me. He's going to show me something. He's going to show me the importance of why I need to have a relationship with him. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned, we come to church Sunday after Sunday, and we think everybody in the house is saved, and that ain't true. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, we appear to be. We appear to be. We dress like we say. We talk like we say. But that don't necessarily mean we are saved. But we got the appearance. Some of us, we've been in church so long, we got the appearance down pat. We make it look like we saved and holy go see. Amen. We know how to get our shout on when it's time to get on the good foot. We know how to do it. Mm -hmm. To make folk really believe that we're sold out for Christ. Mm -hmm. But if you follow them home, yeah. wait a minute, let me bag up, let me bag up. You ain't even got to follow them home. Just follow them out to the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> you follow them out to the yeah. parking lot and things become different. Mm -hmm. The attitude, the demeanor, everything is different. Boy. Like I told the kids in Sunday school one time, several times I've told them, there's a difference and save folks in church folk. Oh, yeah. There's a big difference. Oh, yeah. Save folks know how to act. Save oh, yeah. folks know how to treat people. Yeah. Save people know how to encourage yeah. folks. Save yeah. folks know how to help folks. Yeah. Yeah. Church folks sit up and talk about people. Yeah. Church folks sit up and put folks down. Yeah. They're not, they don't understand mm. how you're supposed to operate. Oh, yeah. They got the look, but oh, they don't have the zeal. Oh, yeah. They don't have what they need to have on the inside. Yeah. They come to church and they want to be in their little cliques all the time. Oh, yeah. They want to sit in their little corner and they don't want to have nothing to do with everybody else. Oh, 
Right. They want to talk about folks that come in church that are trying to get saved. Right. That are trying to get a deeper relationship with God. Church folk will sit up and call other folk not to want to be saved. Mm. Amen. Right. Amen. Because of the perception that they're putting out there. Mm. But I, I know that, ooh, I know that's going to go on the internet. Some folks going to be mad, <laughs> but I got to do what you told them. Mm. The thing of it is, we, 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 we come in with the perception. Right. But we're not really there. Right. Amen. We're not really there. Right. Our mind is far from God's word. Right. We want to come in and we want to run everything. Right. You ever been to a church where folk that want to run everything? If it don't go right, go the way they want it to go. They, they will almost disrupt serve. Mm -hmm. Because it's just not going the way they want it to go. Right. But there's a difference in your life when Christ is in it. Right. There's a difference. You come to church to do what? Lift up the name of Jesus. You come to church to praise God for all that he's done. You come to church to do exactly what God wants you to do. Amen. And some folks may get mad when I say this, but a lot of us need to learn to stay in our land. Amen. We need to learn to stay in our land. God didn't call everybody to be the pastor. He didn't call everybody to preach. He did not call everybody to sing. He didn't call everybody to teach. He didn't call all of us to be deacons. Stay Amen. in your lane. Do exactly what God called you to do. Do the job that he gave for you. Instead of trying to get in somebody else's lane. God didn't call me to play the BM. So trust me, I ain't even in your lane. That's your business. I ain't got nothing to do with that. He didn't call me to play the drum. That's not my deal. Do you know you can totally disrupt serving by getting somewhere you ain't got no business in? Oh, yeah. Stay oh, yeah. in your life. Oh, yeah. When God is in your life, you know exactly what you're calling you. You know exactly what he wants you to do. Oh, yeah. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You know it. Oh, yeah. When God called me to preach, there wasn't no if, ands, or buts about it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I asked him for a sign because I wanted to be sure. Amen. Mm. And when he showed me that this is exactly what he wanted me to do, mm -hmm. I've been running ever since. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Thank God I've been in the ministry almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't trade nothing for it at all. Oh, Why? Because I know this is exactly what he called me to do. Oh, Have yeah. I had some rough times? Yes. Have I had some more deals to go through? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have I even made mistakes? Yes. But the fact of the matter is I never lost touch with him. Why? Because I knew every mistake I could go back and get forgiveness from him right. for what I did. I understood and knew that my mindset was, I got to do what he called me to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some of us don't have a relationship with him. Right. And we're wondering why. Why? Everything is messed up. Yeah. We wonder why we find it hard to forgive for. Right. Why? Because we don't have that connection with him. Right. And like I told the kids in Sunday school, we want God to forgive us, but we won't forgive other folk. Yeah. 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 And some of us have messed up worse than what that person did. <laughs> but we don't want to forgive them. But we want God to forgive us. Right. We want God to have mercy on us. We want God to love us. And we can't even love our fellow man. Right. It makes no sense to me. Right. It really does. I'm trying to get around this story, but I guess it's just going to keep poking me in the side. So I guess <laughs> I'm going to have to go with it. You know how sometimes when you come to church and, and some people just love to praise God, no matter where they are, they just love to praise God. They love to get their shout on. Whatever this old lady that used to come to church all the time, they called her Sister Mandy. Sister Mandy came to church every Sunday, loved to praise God, didn't care who was there, it did not matter who was preaching. All that stuff wasn't important to her. You preaching the word, Sister Mandy going to encourage you. Mm -hmm. And just a little side note, that's one of the things I love about Louis women. As long as you preach the word of God, Louis women are going to push you. They're going to get behind you. They're going to say amen. amen. This young lady prayed God no matter what. Mm -hmm. The preacher was preaching. When he get on the right thing, she said, amen, pastor. That's right. Preach the word of God. Everybody sitting there looking around. Man, I wish you'd be quiet. She kind of thought of it. But she always prayed God. That's just what she did. Boy. And don't let it get real good in there because Sister Amanda get out of the aisle and she get on the good foot. Boy. And she get to praising God like she had lost her mind. Mm. So some of the members in the church had a problem 
with the relationship that Sister Mandy had with God. They had a problem with the fact that Sister Mandy prayed God and she was noisy with her prayer. Right. They felt like she was out of order and she was causing problems in the service. So one Sunday, one day that Sister Mandy was down in the local gallery of mall walking and some of the finest sisters of the church spotted her. And they said, there she is, girl, there she is right there. There she is right there. We might need to go and say so to her. There she is right there, right there. Right. Okay, I got her, I got her. So they walked over and they said, how you doing, sister? She said, I'm good. You know, of course, when they walked up on she had two shopping bags in her hand and a load in her bottom lip. So they spoke to her. She said, yeah. They said, you know, we go to the church with you. She said, I know. She said, well, we got one request that we want to ask of you. She said, what is it? She said, we, we noticed that you're just so noisy in the service. Mm -hmm. And we just want to know, would you mind just kind of quieting it down some because we can't hear what the preacher's saying over you. So if you don't mind, can you just be a little quieter on Sunday morning? She looked at him and she said, I understand your dilemma. She said, but ain't nothing I can do about that. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm going to tell you one thing. She said, my husband died a long time ago and left me with some small children to raise on my own. She said, I didn't know what I was going to do. She said, but the Lord blessed me to get a job yeah. and take care of my kids. Yeah. And she said, then after that, the Lord blessed me with a second job. Yeah. And she said, I hated to do, but I had to leave my kids at home. Mm -hmm. And I went and I worked. Both jobs. Mm -hmm. And she said, I thank God that none of my kids ever got hurt. They never got in trouble. Mm -hmm. They didn't get on that old dope stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't do any of that. I went and worked. And the Lord blessed me to be able to put them all through school. Mm -hmm. I got them all the way to high school. And she said, I thank God that all of them getting, they done graduated and everything. She said, my son and my daughter, I got a doctor finna come through and I got a lawyer finna come through. The other ones got authorizations and stuff to go to school. And she said, I thank God about it. She said, some of them, I didn't even know how I was going to send them to college. She said, but I talked to the Lord about it. Yeah. And the Lord made a way. They got scholarships and everything that they needed to go to school. She said, matter of fact, the last one is getting ready to graduate now. And she said, I thank God that now they done set me down. They done bought me a house. It's got hot running water in it. I got water, wall carpet. Right. She said, I got a heaving heat and thermostat on the wall. She said, I got a refrigerator. It's got an ice maker on the front of it. It's got water on the front of that there. She said, I got everything that I need. And she said, on top of that, she said, if you hold these shopping bags, I shop right here. Because God has really been good to yeah. me. He yeah. made a way just for me yeah. and my family. Yeah. Right. She said, so if you got a problem with me being noisy, then you just got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> she right. said, because I'm going to pray them like I lost my mind. Yeah. Every time I get a chance, right. when the presence of God is in your life, right. you will praise God no right. matter what you're going through. When you come in contact with Jesus, you'll never be the same. Right. When we look at Isaiah chapter 6, I'm moving on. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. When Isaiah came in contact with God, it changed everything for him. Oh, yeah. Isaiah didn't have a desire to do anything. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a desire to want to run on for the Lord. Mm -hmm. But after he got into the temple and after Isaiah began to see the things that he saw, in chapter 6 and verse 1 it said, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. He yeah. said, I saw also the Lord sitting up on a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Yeah. He said, above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain they did fly. And said, and one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. All right. But when you go down, I'm not going to read all of that, but verse 5 really stood out to me and said, Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Mm. He said, because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Wow. When he got into the presence of God, Isaiah realized, there's something wrong with me. Oh, yeah. Isaiah began to realize, there's some changes I got to make. Mm. He said, that is some stuff that I need to change. Oh, yeah. He realized that I was hanging with the wrong crowd. Oh, yeah. He realized that I'm not right, they ain't right, and there needs to be a change. Oh, yeah. And he cried out, he said, woe is me. 
Mm. A lot of us walking around thinking we got everything all figured out. Mm. We thinking we got everything all worked out just the way we want it to be. Mm. And I learned in my 39 years of living, no, you don't have it all worked out. Boy. It's a day-to-day -day process. Boy. Each day you got to crucify self. Each day you got to reaffirm everything with God. You got to make sure you got it all in order. Boy. As it goes through, the Lord began to ask. He said, who will go for it? Who shall I see? Mm. And after the change that took place, Isaiah said, here am I. He said, send me, I'll go. Boy. He wasn't ashamed. He wasn't afraid. He said, send me, I'll go do exactly what you want me to do. Boy. Why? Because I had this encounter that changed everything I ever thought of. Boy. One thing I love about him being in your life, it makes life a little easier. Boy. Some things that you used to couldn't deal with. Mm. You find the strength to be able to deal with. Oh, yeah. Some things that you used to get trouble and tore up about, you don't even do it anymore. Mm. Why? You say, you know what? I'm just going to put it in God's hands. Oh, yeah. It's going to be all right. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned about Amen. God, God is not going to move and push you and do all this. He doesn't force you to do anything. God wants us to learn to just move out of the way. Oh, yeah. Some of us are always doing this. It's my situation. I try to fix it. I, I get it together. No. The Lord just waiting on you to bag up and move out the way. Oh, yeah. When you right. bag up and take your hands off of it, then he'll fix it. Amen. He'll work it out. Amen. Oh, yeah. But as long as you keep doing this, yeah. he can't get to it. Oh, yeah. And then the crazy part that gets me, we walking around. I'm glad when God fixed this situation. He can't fix it if you don't move. Oh, yeah. He can't fix it if you don't let him get to it. Oh, yeah. You got to let him get to it. I wish you'd fix my children. Get out the way and let him fix them. Amen. If you move out the way and let God do what he wants to do with them, then you will see the difference in them. But as long as you keep hovering over them and won't let God do what he needs to do, they're going to keep acting the way they act. Amen. I learned sometimes if you just move out of the way. Boy. It don't even take forever. Just slide along. Just move. <laughs> and when you move, God will start working. But that's why you had it all, thought you had it figured out. God had already worked it out. Boy. You Amen. sitting there trying to figure stuff out and trying to work it out and map it out. God had already worked it out for you. Boy. He just Amen. waiting on you to move out the way so he can tell you exactly what he's about to do. Amen. What a difference. Boy. The presence of God makes in your life. Amen. When he's in your life, you're not ashamed oh, yeah. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. You're not ashamed to tell folk that you know who he is. Oh, yeah. You're not ashamed to share him with other people. Amen. You're not ashamed to let folk know whose side you're on. Mm. That's why I used to love that song that Timothy Wright put out. Is I'm on the Lord's side. Mm. And it doesn't matter who knows. Mm. I let anybody know I'm on the Lord's side. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned about us too when we come, when I used to sit down and work on sermons. I used to always be like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm on the high point. I'm ready for the hoop. I'm ready for the holler. I'm ready to jump all around. I want to do all this kind of stuff. The theatrics is what got me. Mm -hmm. Lord, tell me it ain't all about that. You got to, you got to do something first. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that you got to teach. You got to reason. Yeah. Then you got a reason to rejoice. Mm -hmm. If you never learn nothing, mm. you ain't got nothing to rejoice about. Amen. If you don't have a relationship with him, right. then you can't even understand why the rest of us are jumping and shouting. Mm. But when you get that relationship with him, when he starts working things out and opening doors for you and changing your heart and opening your eyes to where you can see things a whole lot differently, right. then you got a reason to shout. Right. And it don't take a whole lot for you to get your praise on either. Mm. If it take a whole lot of pumping and priming for you to get your praise on, that's a problem. Right. But it don't take a whole lot for me to get my praise on. Amen. Because when I look back over my life and I see what far God has brought me from, I have a reason to praise God. And even if I got to praise him by myself, it's fine with me. I praise him whether nobody says anything at all. Because right. I know how good he is. Right. I know how good he is. Mm. Well, the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been fun. Good women, I gotta run. Yeah, See you later. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. See you, Jay. And after a while, crocodile. Yeah. Yeah, it. But I got two more things I'm gonna share with you, and I'm getting on out the way. Amen. All right. I, I, I read something on a 
fan back some years ago that kind of really stuck with me over the years. Mm -hmm. Now that we've actually moved from where we were, God blessed us to move somewhere a whole lot better. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus. This thing really, really resonated in my heart when I was at work the other day. Mm -hmm. And it says, I moved from Broke Down Lane in a neighborhood of defeat to an upscale neighborhood in the God Can and pros on God Can subdivision on Prosperity Lane. It says, I no longer dwell with the go-along just to get along game. Mm. So now I hang with the God's got it crew. Mm. So we trust and believe that God's got it all under control. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad that I moved to this new neighborhood because there's blessing on every corner. Oh, yeah. It says, if you would like to, you can move to the same neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Because in my father's house, a mini match. Oh, yeah. It says, so you are welcome to come and be a part of what God is doing. Oh, yeah. Just give it all to him, and he will take care of the rest. Oh, yeah. Every time I turn down my street and I look at that house, sometimes I say, Lord, I don't know how we got it. Mm -hmm. But I know it hasn't been because of you. Yes. It had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. You blessed us, and I thank you for it. Oh, yeah. And the last thing I want to share with you is about this young lady that had an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. and everybody knows this young lady because she's been around a mighty long time. Mm -hmm. and her name is Sister Shirley Caesar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister Shirley Caesar said that when they were growing up, they used to play church. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, and some of us still play at church now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she said, but oh, yeah. her and her brother and her sister used to play church. Said they would get out on the bottom steps and her brother was the preacher. Mm. They would play church every time they got a chance. She said, her mama came to her one day and she said, Shirley Ann, I'm sick of you going down to that church playing with God. Mm. Now Shirley Ann would go to church and she'd jump and shout and run all over the place and come back home. She was still disobedient, didn't want to clean her room, didn't want to do what mama told her to do, didn't want to do anything. So her mama was fussing at her that day and she decided that they were going to go outside and they were going to play church. Mm -hmm. so they got down on the bottom steps and her brother had some old glasses and he took them and he put them down on his nose like this here. And he looked at him and he told him, said, I want you to jump up and shout Jesus three times. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I jumped up and I shouted Jesus two times. Mm -hmm. She said, but when I jumped up the third time, she said, something got a hold of me. She said, I couldn't sit back down. Amen. And she said, my sister ran in the house and said, Mama, said, Shirley Ann is out there playing with the Lord. Amen. So Mama ran to the door and looked at her and seen Shirley Ann running and jumping and shouting and crying Boy. all over the backyard. Yeah. Mama realized and told her daughter, said, no, she ain't playing this time. <laughs> when you have a true encounter with God, yeah. I don't care where you are or who you are, Boy. there's going to be a true difference in your life. Yeah. Your speech is not going to be the same. Your attitude would not be the same. Right. And I'm glad that this day yeah. that I had a true encounter with God oh, yeah. way back almost 20 years ago. Yeah. God stepped down in my life yeah. and he changed me for the better. Oh, yeah. Has it been rough sometimes? Oh, yeah. Have I had some issues sometimes? Oh, yeah. But I understood and knew that every time the problems came, yeah. I had somebody I could go to. Yeah. I could go to the rock. Yeah. The rock of my salvation. Yeah. I, I could I could go to my healer, he always showed up. I could go to my deliverer, because he always brought me out. I could go to my financial God, because why? He owns a cattle of a thousand I don't care what you're standing in need of. My God is able. He's able to fix it out. And the reason I know it, I tried it for myself. He is able to do it. But fail. Yeah. Can I get a witness in this room? Who are these pictures today? Yeah. 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 When God shows up yeah. in your life, yeah. the things you used to do, yeah. you won't do them no more. Oh, yeah. 
the way you used to talk, yeah. you won't talk like that no more. Yeah. The way you used to serve God, yeah. you won't serve him like that no oh, more. Yeah. You'll find yourself praising God oh, in ways you never praised him before. Oh, yeah. Because God, I got a true connection with him yeah. that, that can't nobody break. Oh, yeah. Can't nobody change. Yeah. Because I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know that I know. Yeah. Is my everything. Yes, yes. I don't know about nobody else, but truly He is, he is. my everything. Yes. What a difference! What a difference! The presence of God yeah. makes in our life. Yeah. Yes. Sure enough. You don't walk the same. You don't act the same. Amen. And you sure ain't gonna talk the same. Amen. 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 Amen.